Well, good evening. My name is Pastor Dwayne Vanderlaan. I'm pastor here at Drayton Reformed Church and so glad that you can join us. If you are watching this, uh, you are likely snowed in. Uh, we decided to pre-record all of this service tonight uh, on Thursday evening, just in case, just in case we were snowed in. Uh, and so we're delighted that we can do it this way uh, through technology to still have a Christmas Eve service. And so we trust that this will be a service that blesses you and draws you in to the real reason behind Christ's birth. a light in the darkness, a light that shines through the word. And the word is light, and the light is the light of the world.
Please pray with me. Lord, on this Christmas Eve, we pause to prepare our hearts for a most beautiful celebration. Your birth and your coming to earth as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, clear our minds so that we can focus on you and the joy you bring to us through the gift of your salvation. And just as the three Magi brought their offerings in celebration of your birth, we bring you gifts too. The declaration of our obedience and devotion to you, the quietening of our hearts, and the joyful overflow of worship and adoration. May this preparation night be a holy night as we once again receive and celebrate your great gift to us this Christmas in your precious name. There's a special feeling about Christmas Eve. We hear the familiar story of Mary and Joseph making their way to the little town of Bethlehem. We once again hear the, the baby, that baby Jesus was born in a stable. We hear the unexpected encounter the shepherds had with the angels. And then all of them heading to the manger to see Jesus for themselves. We see children creatively acting out the story for generations, complete, of course, with the wise men offering their gifts. The story of Jesus' birth has become part of who we are. It's our story. And there is something very familiar as well as comforting on this night. But all of this points to so much more. Because to truly celebrate Christmas, we need the rest of the story. So let's focus a few moments on a, on a verse in God's Word, the Holy Scriptures, a verse which gives us the whole picture. It's a verse containing words that an angel spoke on a night so very long ago, but words still so very relevant for each of us tonight. It's the word of the Lord from Luke chapter 2, verse 11. These are the words. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This verse tells us something incredibly significant about the coming of Christ to earth. And what his coming means to us. These words tell us first that that there's a reality. There's a reality of his coming. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. Born this day. There were no miracles 
associated with the physical birth of Jesus Christ. Now, of course, there was the miraculous conception, but Mary's pregnancy following that followed the normal course of all human pregnancies, leading to the night in Bethlehem when she gave birth to Jesus Christ in a stable. And though Luke doesn't give us any details, we can safely assume that that the delivery itself was normal in, in every way, or at least as normal as any birth could be under such trying circumstances. Every now and again, we hear of women giving birth in strange places, like, like in a car, or in an airplane, or at the mall, or at a restaurant, sometimes alone, and sometimes attended by a very frightened husband. Normal births that happen in extraordinary circumstances. The birth of Jesus falls into that category. A true event that took place in a normal way, in a very abnormal situation. And those words, born this day, means that it really happened. There are many who read the entire chapter of Luke 2 And say it is simply too bizarre to believe. But this is a real place. During a real time. It's not a legend. It's not a myth. It's not a nicely told fairy tale. To put it into contemporary terms. The virgin birth is not like for example. The well known Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Book by J.R. Tolkien. It's it's famous, and the the movies are breathtaking. But the story is not meant to be taken as history. But everything of the biblical account of the birth of Jesus is true, including the central truth, that there was really a baby born in Bethlehem who was really the Son of God. So that's the beginning of the verse. Then comes the high point, the the pinnacle of this verse. The one who is born this day is a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And each word used to describe this little infant is incredibly important. Savior means one who delivers his people. Christ means anointed one. And Lord is another word for God. Hear those words again. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And when the angel announced the birth of Jesus to Joseph, he said, give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. We are in such a desperate need for a Savior. And that's the heart of Christmas. God loved us enough to send his only begotten son. Think of it this way. He didn't send a committee. He didn't write a book. He didn't send a substitute. When God got got ready to save the world, he sent the best he had. And that was his son. And in sending Jesus, he was really sending himself. And that's the stupendous, that is the astounding truth of Christmas. This verse contains one other life-changing truth. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. Consider those two words. Unto you. Consider for a moment who the angel was talking to. Shepherds. We forget that shepherds were near the bottom of the social order of ancient Israel. They were often poor. They were uneducated. Some were quite young. And not very many people would pick shepherd on their career preference form. There were many easier ways to make a living in ancient Israel. So when the angel says, to you is born, he's really saying, Christ came for even lowly shepherds. And when the shepherds heard 
these words from the angel, they probably were flabbergasted. Because when Christ came, his birth was first announced to the outcasts of society. They were the first ones to hear the good news of Christmas. There is a great lesson in this for all of us. Our Lord came for the forgotten people of the earth, and most of the time they are the ones who receive him with the greatest of joy. So here's a simple application. The angel said, for unto you. For unto you. He came for you. And this is where Christmas becomes intensely personal. It's not enough to say abstractly that you believe Christ came. Millions say that, but they're still lost in their sins. It's not enough to say that Christ came for someone else. You can never be saved until you say, Christ came for me. He died for me. He rose from the dead for me. Do you believe that? Many, many families will gather around the Christmas tree. Tonight, tomorrow, to open presents. And when you receive your gifts this Christmas, what will you do? Will you not open them? What use is a gift that's unopened? 2,000 years ago, God sent a gift wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Jesus is God's Christmas gift to you. But you will never experience Christmas joy until you personally receive God's gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ came to save us from our sin, but even his death on the cross cannot save us until we believe in him. I just want to close with this story. A man traveled a great distance for an interview with a distant scholar. He was ushered into the, the man's study. He had tons of books where he said, Doctor, I noticed that the walls of your study are lined with books from the ceiling to the floor. From the ceiling to the floor. And no doubt you have read them all. I know you have written many yourself. You have traveled extensively and doubtlessly you've had the privilege of conversing with some of the wisest men. And I've come a long way to ask you just one question. Tell me, all, out of all you've learned, what is the one thing most worth knowing? Putting his hand on his guest's shoulder, the scholar replied with emotion in his voice, my dear sir, of all the things I have learned, only two are really worth knowing. The first is that I am a great sinner. And the second is that Jesus Christ is a great Savior. And if you know those two things personally, you know the best news in the world that a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Under the covers of a warm and quiet night, there is a heart that beats with quiet thunder that shudders under the load of fear that comes with glimpsing the face of the unknown. He shivers in the night air as he looks out the window, wondering how will he manage? Where is the light? So many worries. No money, no security, no steady income, only the sweat of his brow and the work of his hands. But he is lucky. He is not out there in the streets begging for the mercy of strangers, shivering in the cold night air, but neither is he warm. How will they manage, the two of them, soon to be three, so young, so scared, so full of what will happen if? Will there be a light at the end of this tunnel of uncertainty? Still we 
There is a light shining in the darkness, a light which shines through the word. And the word is light, and the light is the light of the world. They have family nearby who try to understand and refrain from judging. But there are questions unasked, murmurs behind his back, hands covering, mouths whispering. And he thinks of her, the wonder in her eyes, the anticipation of things to come, her calmness, sure that God is with her. Eyes follow her down the street. He's seen them watch and wonder at her. She grows daily more beautiful and more full of the wonder of life. Can there be a light for her that he can't see? angel. Imagine an angel. She said there was one. The angel's name was Gabriel. How could she mistake an angel for anyone else? It was no one she knew, not dressed up, not from far away, but rather otherly. From another place entirely, from heaven, where there is no fear for what tomorrow will bring, 
where no one asked whether there would be comfort or safety. As she rested in the words of the angel, in the darkness of her room, the light flickered within her. Soon they would travel. Weariness would well up in them. And the man and woman would try to remember the words given to them by the angel. So the man and the woman packed up their food and their belongings and headed toward the town of crowds and camels of pushing and noise, of travelers looking for shelter. There they would find lodging and food and warmth and shelter and light. There is a light shining in the darkness, a light which shines through the word. And the word is light, and the light is the light of the world. For the angel had promised her a great joy, a child of wonder and wisdom, a child of grace, a child. The name of the child would be the awaited one, the comforter, the prince of peace, the promise of God.
And as the man and the woman stumbled wearily into the dark town, there were no smiles of reassurance with hot food to, to warm them, or beds ready with clean linen smelling of sun and wind. But after the final step was taken, the time arrived, waiting not for beds or linens, or warmth, or shelter, or comfort, or light. an everyday miracle that was made miraculous by the touch of God. The man stared at the wonder before. What strange and holy waves were they that cast this child on the shores of their lives to be part of such a moment? Surely it was never before like this for anyone.
an everyday miracle, but more. The woman nestled the babe to her breast as if there were nothing in all the world but the child. No chickens underfoot, no musty straw to sneeze away, no drafty darkness, just warmth, just shelter, just comfort, just light. There is a light shining in the darkness, a light which shines through the word. And the word is the light, and the light is the light of the world. There they lay, whole and complete. The man wandered at the gentle sounds and soft breathings, when suddenly a joy, so deep it wound around his heart, wafted out of the cracks in the walls, soared high into the night, and cracked the darkness, the night was changed, no longer a waiting, shapeless present, but a time of holiness and awe. Even those in the fields were shaken by the shattered darkness. A rent in the sky appeared, and angels gushed out over the night shrouded hills. The darkness could not hold the light. Light poured out over the keepers and their sheep and rolled over the town, pushing before it men and women who had no love for the town. Its crowds and its noise and pulling in its wake, wanderers from the world's edge, all to see the babe. The word became flesh, the light of the world, bringing hope, bringing peace, bringing love, bringing joy.
And the man leaned against the dark of the stable wall, his head resting on the rough service, hands limp with relief. The strangers had gone, leaving behind gifts and memories of faces touched by holy light. Wisps of excitement still hung in the air, and joy wrapped in garlands around the sleeping pair. He watched them sleep, breathing low and soft, wrapped together in straw and silence, the light of God shining in and around them. a light shining in the darkness, a light which shines through the word. And the word is light, and the light is the light of the world.
There is a light shining in the darkness. A light which shines through the word. And the word is light. And the, and the light, light is, is the light, light of, of the, the world. world. 